Hello and welcome to another metal cast from Metal Coffee Shop. My name is Heidi Ellsworth, and we're here to talk about something very important for the end of the year, and that is buying equipment. And especially, what do we talk about in buying used, new? What are the pitfalls? We brought the experts from Metal Forming to talk to us about that today. And I would like to introduce Steve Gausk and Ken McLaughlin from Metal Forming to join us today. Hello, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Heidi. Good Heidi, to be with how you. are you? I am good. I'm so happy to have both of you here. And from what I understand, you're here, you've just gotten back from Europe and quite the tour of seeing all the greatest new um, advancements in machinery. Yes, ma'am. We just got back of a big whirlwind tour of about 12 days with our partners over in Europe, visiting factories, working with our partners over there and really getting an opportunity to to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with them as our management team. So it was a, a really great visit. Enjoyed Europe, enjoyed the uh, winter season, and uh, we're back and happy to be working on finishing out the year. I love it. And Steve, this was your second year, right? Um, to yeah, do this did, great tour. Yeah, we did this last year at the same time, and it, it is really a great time to sit down with them and and talk about what our plans are for next year. And, and how we plan to work together to achieve those. But, but most of all, from the machinery aspect, it's a, it's a really good time to provide them insights as to what we're seeing in this market for machine requirements and influence their product roadmap for the future and give them insight to our customer base. So it's always a, a worthwhile discussion. You get a lot done face-to-face. Yeah. And uh, as I said, this time of year is a good time to kind of lock in and, and get prepared for next year. That is, um, I love that because there is, and there's a lot going on out there right now and there's a lot of need. Um, and you know what? I jumped right into it because I was really excited about your European tour, but let's be sure we get our introductions in. So Steve, if you could introduce yourself, talk a little bit about metal forming and what you do. Sure. So my name is Steve Gosk. I'm the president of metal forming. Um, as Heidi mentioned, been here just over a year, um, but responsible for the operation here and you know, metal forming sits between the customer and the supplier. So, you know, on one side, we're, we're trying to work very closely with our suppliers, make sure we're having the right product for our markets, the right attributes in those products, and we service the customer well. And then on the other side for the customers, we have to be that value to them. And in between, you know, we are there to be their expert, um, someone that they can, can count on for a variety of different products that they need within their operations. Um, and you know we're there from everything from the sales to the service startup and support. That that is great. And Ken, to, and please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit of what you do at Metal Forming. Yep, uh, my name is Ken McLaughlin. I'm the vice president of architectural sales. I've been here uh, officially almost a year. January second, I uh, came over to be part of Steve's team when he assumed the leadership role here. I oversee our sales team and work with our customer base. Um, for, from everything from folders and shears to hand tools to roll formers, um, trying to solve their needs, have discussions. We have a very informative sales process here, so we try to be educational and informational. And so collecting data, making sure we're doing the right thing and, and moving forward. And I've been in this magical industry for about 33 plus years now. I so love it. Uh, involved in a lot of machinery purchasing for a lot of years. Uh, but now really excited to be part of this team and, and be working with our group to, to bring solutions to the market. Yeah, you guys have had an amazing 2023. It's been so fun to be partnered with you, to watching everything that is going on, such amazing growth. And so I, today we really wanted to talk a lot about that used equipment marketplace. Um, and so Ken, maybe starting with you, just what are, I mean, I know I'm seeing on our classified ads, there is a lot of used machinery. People are buying new, selling their used. What are you seeing um, in the equipment marketplace and around availability? Yep. So, I mean, this year has been in one of those things. So we've really had a lot of people having great years in the construction industry and it gets to this time of the year and everybody starts thinking about, okay, what do I need to do? What am I looking at? Where's my next business model? We have a lot of people that are looking for not as much automation as new technology. We want to see how do we increase the process in our facilities? How do we see people improving that process to, to get more out of the same amount of space and, and basically make the work a little easier on their employees. We've watched a whole bunch of this happen where we've had people say, hey, I would need to invest in new equipment. 
And we've had a whole bunch of people come in and say, hey, listen, I need some replacement equipment that may be not new. So it's been a little bit all over the place. But our last two weeks have been phenomenal. We're making jokes about that uh, we're we're not supposed to come back from Europe anymore. If we have weeks like that <laughs> while we're gone, we need to be gone more often. So. I love it. I love it. Steve, what are you seeing in the marketplace? Yeah, I mean, much of what Ken's saying, um, it's it's still very, very active out there. Um, you know, you could start with with the Metal Con show and, and the activity level and, and attendance that it had. And, and as much as anything, the quality of the attendance at the show. And even though we're in the last quarter of the year, uh, it's it's been extremely active in a lot of um, different programs and projects, you know, in, in our world, both on the industrial fabrication side, as well as the architectural metal side. So that's a good sign. And and yeah. so we're, we're fairly bullish as we go into 2024. It makes me happy. I, I know you're going to be on one of our metal talks, Steve, we're going to be yeah. talking more about 2024. So I'm, I'm excited about that because it's always nice to get our crystal balls out this time of year and kind of look around. But I do want to talk a little bit about the contractors who are looking to buy used machines, because I think there's a lot to consider used to new as you gentlemen are the experts on this. But one question, Ken, and I kind of want to start with this. When when you buy a used car, you know it's used, you know you can probably get parts, you know you can do all those kind of things. But what about when you buy a used machine? How does that work? Do you How do you get service? How do you get parts? Is that all part of the program or what should people look for? Yeah, my, it's a great question, Heidi. So I mean, uh, a lot of the question comes down to the year of the machine and where the machine's from. Uh, we have a lot of people that are trading in 20 year old machines with us because we'll take our brand of machinery back in trade, refurb them and sell them at a basically factory OEM type level wow. um, with not current software. But, you know, while people doing that on a regular basis, we also get a lot of people calling saying, hey, listen, I found this machine at an auction. I found it here. My buddy wants to sell it. This is what's going on. What are your thoughts? Um, any of the brands that we carry, we're more than happy to have discussions with you. There are times when parts become obsolete and you can't get them anymore. So it's it's always important if you're looking at used to understand the risk you're taking. Obviously, there's a benefit of cash, you know, in dollar amounts that you're getting into that you're saving money, which might fit your budget and allow you to actually put a piece of equipment in where you couldn't afford a new. You just want to make sure that the parts are available for it because the service is important, but if you don't have parts to put into it, it makes it really difficult. So yeah. I would say if you're looking at a used machine, reach out to the manufacturer of the machine, see what's there. There's a lot of companies that, you know, five, 10 years ago that were here in the boom before 2020 that aren't here anymore. So you want to make sure that that's available to you at the very least. I, you know, I think that's, that's such great advice. And Steve, if you kind of take that one step further, you have as part of your core values at metal forming is very customer centric. And so I just can, I just loved what you just said about, Hey, if you're thinking about it, just call us and talk to us. And Steve, why is that so important to have that kind of partner when you're looking at buying machinery used or anywhere? Yeah, you know, I, I say this all the time. I, I'm I'm really proud of our team when you know the approach we take and we do it every time is ask that customer what what they want to do today and and what do they want to do five years from now with the machine, and and really begin to understand what what the customer's need is and with that guide them into the machine that best fits that need and and that could be used or it could be new depending on you know, where that customer's business is at. And, and first and foremost, I think it's important for us to understand exactly what they're trying to do with the machine itself. Um, you know, for, for us here, um, we see the, the refurbishment use market is, is a pillar for the future. So we're going to continue to put emphasis and focus on that aspects. Um, we're working with, with our suppliers to assist in us doing that with the parts, but, Particularly on the folders, you know, the, the brains of the folder is, is the controls and, you know, our partners will offer a complete refurb control cabinet, kind of a, a set in place where literally all of the electronics are placed right into the same size cabinet that exists with the machine. Wow. So the rest of it's pretty much a lot of a lot of heavy steel and mechanical, yeah. mechanical parts. So if, if you can get the controller and, and uh with Schechtel, particularly in our line, they'll go all the way back to 2001. So, so you're going back, you know, 20 plus years where there is an opportunity to retrofit. So 
you know, depending on, again, where the customer's business is at, it, it may be, you know, more in line with their financial and business needs just to simply replace that controller and continue on, you know, with it, they get a, a warranty from us on, on that. We can, you know, do the work um, here or, or some of it can even be done in the field. So again, it, it really depends where they're at today, where they want to go, how much money they have to invest and in what you know machine capability they're they're trying to get to um in their business you know what you just said there that really kind of hits home to me cuz i'm i'm thinking of folks out there who have a sheet metal shop already and so they have a shop and they are trying to figure out do i trade it in do i refurbish it do i buy something else to go with it so ken you've been doing this for a long time and when you're looking at those sheet metal shops out there right now for the contractors what is some of the things that they should be thinking about as they're looking at their shop right now, um, going into the end of the year and making investments back into the business? Yeah, I, I think the the big thing that we've been really hitting on this was the equipment. And I was just thinking while Steve was talking about one of the customer relationships we had just recently where a gentleman called up, was talking with one of our salespeople. I happened to get involved in the conversation and, and he said, listen, um, I've had a check for 20 years. I'd like to get a new piece of equipment because I've had a good year and I'm thinking about selling this piece of equipment and you know, what's it worth? So we gave him some ideas on what it was worth. We gave him a number for trading it in so we could refer because it was within within that window. Mm -hmm. And then we said, you know, there's, there's other partners and you guys are one of those partners that have roofers coffee shop and the classifieds. And we said, listen, we're going to give you a certain number for this. We're going to take it back. We're going to refer, but well, pardon me, we're going to bring it back to our location in Georgia we're going to refurb it. We're going to tear it all the way down, repaint it. It's going to leave here looking like a new machine again, put a new electrical cabinet and everything on it. And then we're going to sell it with a warranty. There's a cost to that. You can sell it outright. You could sell it on Roofer's Coffee Shop or you could sell it to a com you know competing company in your market. And that's another option. And then a lot of the times the option when somebody says, hey, it's working fine, but I just realized I need to reinvest. My answer all the time is, do you want some redundancy? Are, are, yeah. Is your business going to grow? Because if you're making one 10 foot piece, could you make two 10 foot pieces at a time? Do you have some downtime or wait me? It's a little bit of a backup. Do you have the space for it? So it's always a question. And again, that, that's part of that sales process. The important informative part is how do we become a good partner with our customer? When you get somebody who calls you and said for 20 years, this has served me well, what do I do? You want to make sure that we give them every answer we can. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. I think that's just the way to go. Now there is, and I want to make sure we bring this up. There is an incentive right now to, to be doing that, to reinvest in your business, whether it's through redundancy, refurbishing, buying used, buying new, all those things. So um, Ken, just talk a little bit about some of the tax incentives yeah, that sure. are going on. So right now we have a, a national tax incentive of 179, and I'm going to first start off by saying I'm not an accountant or a CPA, but you yep. should talk to yours because right now it's in an ascending fashion. It used to be 100% deductible two years ago. It went to 80% this year. They could take it off your taxable income. As of next year, in less than 30 days, it will go to 60% next year, which is a, a dramatic number. So when somebody has the ability to take 80% of that purchase value and apply it to their taxable income for the year, a great incentive for a lot of businesses that are having a great year. So again, talk to your tax professional, talk to your accountant, see what they have to say, but that is there and it's available for you. And that's the lion's share of what's walking in the door right now for us is the contractor got back from Thanksgiving. He's taking that initial look at how my year is going to finish. Yeah, He's talking with his accountant and his accountant is, well, you have a couple different options here. You can get prepared to write Uncle Sam a check or you can invest back in your business and use it as a deduction. And so a, a lot of the people, it, just yesterday we had this happen where people walked in the door and they're like, we don't understand this. He got on the phone with his accountant after we talked about it. his accountant called him back and said, you need to figure this out, get something that they have. No. Like he, it, it's a no. good thing. He, they're not, yeah, they're not telling you a story and there's parameters around it that you have to abide by to do it. And that's why I think it's really important to talk with your accountant, but we're more yeah. than happy to to help steer as much as we can with that. So such an important time. And so 
Um, and there's not a whole lot of time left. So you, you really do have to act now. And so for those folks who are looking at starting a new sheet metal shop, there's a lot of contractors out there. I saw at MetalCon, who I'm sure you all talked to, who are like, we want to start our own um, sheet metal shop. So Steve, um, you know, when these contractors are looking by use, by new, starting a brand new sheet metal shop, what's some of your recommendations? Yeah, it, it you know, I hate to say it, it, it really depends. Yeah. Right? And, and to your point, uh, it it is one of my favorite things is typically at a show, you know, we, we have at least five or 10 people walk in the booth, they're, they're roofing contractors, they're going to get into fabrication, and they're looking for their starter set of machines that, that they need to do that. And, yeah. you know, because it's somewhat a combination of, of where they're at today and where they expect to go five years from now, um, their financial situation and the types of products naturally that they're looking to to make. Um, the used machines are, you know, they they go pretty quickly. I mean, they're in, in the current market environment, at least there is, you know, a quick turnover in used used equipment. So it, it has a high demand. So if you're looking for something very specific, you may have to go to new to to find that machine that's going to do what you need it to do um, yeah. because it's just just not available in the market or not easily available in the market. But if you if you can, you know, find a refurbished machine that, you know, has been, you know, fully refurbished. So for us here, you know, that includes sanding the machine down to its bare metal, repainting it, replacing the controller and such. Um, you know, that machine is is just about new and you're going to save yourself some money. Now, I think one of the things to think about, too, is if you're starting a new sheet metal shop, you probably need a lot of training. And so, you know, and, and the name of this, we're talking about the benefits and the pitfalls of buying used. And so in my mind, buying used, if you're just starting out and you need a lot of training and you buy it, I mean, I love everyone to buy stuff off um, Rufus Coffee Shop, classified ads, <laughs> but it seems like at that point, um, there is a need for people to really have, work with experts and be able to get that ongoing training. Maybe, you know, Ken, you can talk just a little bit about what you provide as support and how important is that when you're starting a sheet metal shop? Yeah, I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head with this. And I think a lot of it has to do with that customer too. Um, when you say we're starting a new sheet metal shop, we have people walking to these trade shows that are starting a sheet metal shop that aren't starting a new sheet metal shop. They're literally taking the next step in their business. So they're starting a business that they've already funded for years. They know what they do. They know what they want. And it's important to get the right equipment in their hands. Um, and then one of the biggest differences between used and, and new or pre-owned and a 20-year-old machine and a new machine is the software capabilities of these machines. And that level comes into your employee as well. Um, this week, we have people in here that have purchased a machine that they're doing three days worth of training that they purchased that as part of their machine install, but they wanted to come out, bring their staff out, train with our people here in place. And then there's a lot of people that they hire a very competent person who's worked on a piece of equipment forever and they can run it tomorrow. So again, fitting the needs of that customer, fitting the needs of their employees and where that business is going, not only today, tomorrow, but you know, the next 10 years, what's the game plan and how do we move forward? So I think it's, it's very important for that because every machine's a little different. Uh, and one thing we haven't really covered, there's a lot of people that'll come out and, and they'll buy your equipment or they'll tell you they're going to sell it on consignment. And basically all that means is they're taking a piece of equipment and they're going to mark it up to what they think's worthwhile. They're going to sell it and they're going to make their money off it and pay your money, which is a great option for some people because they don't want to be involved in that sales process. However, when you're not getting that machine refurbed and set back to OEM standards, there's where you can have somewhat of a hurdle later in life. So you're not getting trained on the machine by somebody who's factory trained. You're not having somebody go over it that's you know, basically brought it back to factory standards. So I think that's yeah. a really key part with new and used that, you know, where's the line in the sand? And ultimately the end, it comes down to financial. And none of us want to hear that, but it's it's no different than walking in and buying a car. Um, everybody wants to drive off in a brand new shiny car, but sometimes a two-year-old machine or two-year-old car is just as good. Right. But sometimes I, I want a new one. I want it with the full warranty. I want it with the training package. I want it installed. And other times it's, hey, this is our third machine or this is our replacement for an older machine and we're already familiar with it. We just need to know you can service us. And that's where I think our team at Metal Forming can truly be a valid partner 
to the industry because we're willing to help through all of that process. That's great. And, and we can, and which is, I think is the big thing that a lot of people can't say. Yeah. I, that is so important. No matter, cause you're going to have combinations no matter what. I mean, you're going to, even if you buy all new, you're still going to have old machines back at the shop that all have to talk together and all have to work together. So you have to have experts on your side. But I thought one thing, Ken, you said that really hit home with me was about your employees. So really including the operators, the people who are running the machines, and some may be just as fast on an older machine because they're so familiar with it. Whereas if you're training a whole new generation, why not start with all the hot software and everything out there that's making a difference? Steve, what have you seen with, you know, different employees from the company, from the companies that you're working with? Yeah, I mean, we do see a lot of that. And I think the, the smart business owners, um, who engage the, the folks who have to live with whatever machine comes in are, are, are going to benefit in the long run. And they really truly know, you know, what works well for them and, and what doesn't. So, so I, I think that's a best practice amongst anybody buying any type of machine new or used is to engage the person and have them including in the decision process, you know, depending again on the type of industry it is, it, it, you know, in the industrial side, it's oftentimes a, a manufacturing engineer. Right. right, he's the one looking yeah. at the efficiency gains, for example. So, it, it could come in some different flavors, but absolutely, that's you know something we like to see. You know, for us, new or used, you know, with the showroom and and the demo equipment we have here, you know, if if people have the time, I mean, the picture is worth a thousand words. If you can come in, touch, feel, get you know, see parts run, I think the the direction you want to go, the value in decision-making that you come down to from a, a dollars and cents standpoint becomes pretty obvious and, and you can make that best decision for yourself. And then post-sale, you, know, you you get the same level of service support training that you would new or used. Right. So it's, it works pretty well. It's all about the partnership. It's about the relationship. <laughs> yeah, it's not a one-time sale. I mean, you know, the customer is, is, you know, hopefully a customer for life and, and gets used to the machine, gets used to the controls, wants, you know, controls that are similar. You know, I, I think the biggest difference between new and use is is the technology shift in, in the world we live in, right? And yeah. things yeah. like, you know, safety and light curtains that, that, you know, some of the newer machines have and have available as options, for example, if that's an important attribute in, in your facility, then, you know, that's it's probably going to drive you to more of a new design. As Ken said, if it's a machine you've been working with for years and, and you just want a backup machine, maybe not as much. Right. You know, one of the things we talked about right at the very beginning, but I want to bring it back here at the end because I think this is important. We talk about, you know, with what we do, marketing goals and sales goals and business plans going into next year. But I, I'm kind of visualizing after Ken, you know, putting together this picture of almost a drawing of a shop. What's it look like this year? What's it look like three years from now? What does it look like 10 years from now? And how those machines start feeling it and working together and talking. Um, Ken, just talk just a little bit about that consultative um, support that you provide and actually putting that long-term goals and maybe that blueprint, that pretty picture you can hang on the wall for visualization together for sheet metal shops. So it, it's one of the things that I think we do very well. If you look at the depth of our bench at this facility, we had we were sitting in a meeting the other day and there were two of us sitting at the table that was over 65 years of experience. I hate to say that because it makes me feel old, it's but like it lets you learn from your failures. <laughs> um, sometimes we call it failing forward. We're going we're gonna to run into it head first, but process flow in a facility you know, understanding long-term goals. When somebody comes in and says, I want a folder and a shear, that, that's great. We want to know, okay, you want a folder and a shear today. What do you want to do four years from now? Are you going to continue to buy sheets and foil? Or is it something you want to get into processing material? You know, what are the different parts you're going to make? And we can help lay out shops for people, um, give them ideas from what we have saw that have been successful, what we have saw that hasn't been successful. And yeah. let the owner truly get an understanding or the shop manager. And we're, I think we're really good at involving their teams at the same time because the guy that's very quiet in the back that's worried about where his next paycheck comes from is the guy we really want on board. He's the right. guy that, you know, understands what he deals with every day. 
and what doesn't work and what hasn't worked and we'd really like to see work. So our facility here, we've actually set that up in our showroom so people can start to get the understanding of it. You can see where the machines fall within the flow. So when you walk into the building, you get an idea that says, okay, if I have this in my facility, I could put this here and this here. And if I wanted to add this later, there's an option. Um, one of the great. biggest fallbacks we see in facilities we go into is flow, yeah. where they've got just things in the wrong place. And it could be as simple as having the shear and the folder in the wrong order. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like a minor thing, but it fit better because the electrical was right for that or whatever it might have been. But for flow-wise, it was a short-term gain and a long-term loss. I love that process flow. And putting that plan, that vision together long term. Um, so really, you know, when we we talked about this podcast of um, or metal cast of um, the benefits and pitfalls of buying used equipment, what it's really about, what's really all at the end of the day is having the right relationships where you can do long term planning and get the right equipment whether used or new, um, to build your future. And so, Steve, I'm going to just have you kind of take that thought and bring us home on that because I just love that. Yeah, I, I think it's spot on. And, and it's certainly, you know, as a supplier, what we aspire to, and, and that's exactly the type of value we have to bring to our customers. Um, and as Ken mentioned, you know, we, we have a lot of folks in the organization with years and years of expertise of doing this, um, business and and you can trust that we're going to give you our our best input and and best result that's not going to be self-serving in any given way because just like buying the car that you really didn't need you figure it out sooner than later yeah. and um, you won't be going back to that dealer so you know these are long-term relationships um, with these various um, contractors and so you know, we're gonna we're gonna listen to what you're looking for and, and we're going to guide you in the best you know, direction we know how. And we're going to look to hopefully, you know, continue to build out the offering that you have from us over the years to come. And, and that could be new used um, or, or the next great thing that comes onto the market. Yeah. It's great. I love it. And here we are at the end of the year. Now's the time. So um, you gentlemen are going to be busy through the holidays. <laughs> and we're yes. trying to land a plane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you both so much for all this great information, for everything you do for the industry and for all the contractors out there who are trying to grow their businesses. Um, this has just been amazing. Thank you. All righty. Can I add one more hey, thing? Honey, before enjoy we the go? Holidays. Thank you. And yes, you can, Ken. Yeah. I, I think just to summarize everything we've talked about, I think it's really important for anybody that's listening to this or anybody's thinking about us is, is find somebody you trust, talk to them, hear what they have to say. Yes. Know they're going to be hurdles. Okay, understand that there's never a perfect process. How you're going to look after those hurdles, I think, is what's going to make you successful as a business. Roofing contractors deal with it every day, overcoming hurdles. I think it's the same thing with their vendors. And if they approach the business the same way they do the roofing business, I think they'll find a lot more success in it. So really understand who your partners are, understand what you need long term, and really identify that ahead of time. Don't buy the next best thing. Buy what you need for your business. It's really important. So that uh, is you, excellent. Uh, so other than that, everybody have fantastic holidays. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the year. Um, <laughs> we've had some, some great experiences this year and we hope to just roll that right into 2024. I tell you what, it's been fun. I, I am, I'm really looking forward to 2024. So thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. You. And thank you all for listening. This is great stuff. I am excited to be able, we've been delivering this. We've been talking about 179 and we've been talking about really talk to your tax accountants, invest back into your business. You have a couple of weeks left. Um, so I hope that all works out, but either way, keep doing it into 2024. And thank you so much for listening every day to all of our podcasts. Be sure to check them all out on Metal Coffee Shop under the RLW navigation for Metalcast. Also, be sure to check out the metal forming directory on Metal Coffee Shop and on Roofer's Coffee Shop. Great stuff, great information. It will help you to really find that co consultation with them that you need. So thank you so much. And please be sure to subscribe to your favorite podcast channel so you don't miss a single Metal Cast. Set those notifications. And we'll be seeing you next time on Metal Cast. Mm -hmm.